Hello, my name is Chelsea Thorpe. I am currently a senior at Whitney Young High School in Chicago. Uh, I am taking a dual credit class in my high school with Malcolm X College called uh, African American Literature, which brings me to the book we will be reviewing today called Native Son by Richard Wright, which was written in 1940. So, Native Son takes place in Chicago in the 1930s. Wright shares the story of a young black man named Bigger Thomas who thirsts for trouble. He grew up in a tightly crammed apartment with his mother and siblings. Bigger is constantly pushed by his mom to get a job and help provide for his family, but he would rather hang out with his friends in rob stores. So, Bigger and his friends set out to rob a white man's store. This is like unheard of in the black community because it comes with so many risks. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> it is also Bigger who constantly pushes his friends to follow through with the heist, but uh, it's also him who stops it by attacking one of the people in his gang. So after the failed robbery, Bigger sees no other choice but to start working for a white man named Mr. Dalton, which is also his landlord. Mr. Dalton is a part of the reason why Black people can't leave their projects because him and other white men don't want the black people moving into their white communities. Mr. Dalton covers himself by letting young black men work for him and donating money to black schools that are poor. On Bigger's first day working for Mr. Dalton, his daughter Mary requests that Bigger drives around her and her boyfriend Jan <clears throat> around the city. Mary is a progressive young white woman, which rubs Bigger the wrong way. Uh, given the fact that he hasn't met many of these people and he's only met uh, really conservative uh, white people. The three of them get drunk while driving around the city. Uh, Mary gets so drunk that she can barely make it up the stairs to her bedroom, so Bigger decides to help her out. When Bigger and Mary finally get to her room, Bigger begins to kiss her. Then he hears Mrs. Dalton come, who is actually blind. So Bigger is scared that Mary is going to reveal who Bigger is, so he puts a pillow on her head and accidentally suffocates her. After realizing she's dead, he puts her body in the furnace. To get away with the crime, Bigger frames Jan, Mary's boyfriend, for Mary's sudden disappearance. After killing Mary, Bigger feels like he holds a great amount of power. Bigger's girlfriend, Bessie, suggests that Bigger writes a ransom note to try to collect money from the rich Daltons. After the note was sent, Mary's bones were discovered in the furnace. Bigger runs away with Bessie to a vacant building, which is where he rapes her and kills her, unfortunately. After hiding for as long as he could, Bigger was finally captured after a shootout between him and the cops. Racist white mobs from across the city uh, used Bigger's offense as an excuse to terrorize the South Side Black community. Authorities and people from Mary's community seemed to think Bigger raped her and then hid her body in the furnace so it could burn. Therefore, nobody would know that he raped her. So once Bigger gets to jail, Jan comes to visit him, shockingly. They have a real heart-to-heart -heart moment. Jan offers for his friend to represent Bigger in court. The lawyer's name is Boris A. Max, and at this point in the story, Bigger starts to see white people from a different lens. Uh, that white people can be compassionate and that every human is equal. When Bigger gets to court, he is sentenced to a death penalty. Uh, Max tries to defend Bigger, saying that he is just a product of his environment, but Max goes on and on trying to save Bigger and nothing could stop him from his life-ending sentence. So the novel ends with Bigger and Max talking. Max tells Bigger to believe in himself. So Bigger finds a way to justify his murders and tells Max that he's all right and that he will be all right. So starting off with the plot, we have the exposition. Within this part of the story, Bigger has just killed a rat in his family's apartment. He put so much power into killing the rat, but it also showed him that he has the authority to the power to kill something or someone. Next in the plot, we have the rising action. In this part, Bigger and his friends are planning to rob the white man's shop. It ends when he spends the night out with Jan and Mary. At the peak of the plot, Bigger is on his killing spree with the murders of Mary and Bessie. Lastly, we have the falling action. They have found Mary's remains in the furnace. The police prosecute Bigger and sentence him to a death sentence. Here, he also forms a relationship with his attorney, Boris A. Max. 
The plot ends with Bigger having compassion for his actions and finally accepting himself for who he thought he was. So now moving on to the POV. The story is told exclusively from Bigger's perspective. This helps readers understand Bigger as a person without having any other character's opinions alter their view on Bigger. Now I'm going to talk about symbolism. So the way the book started was with Bigger killing the rat. On page six, Wright writes, no pun intended, he kicked the splintered box out of the way and the flat, back, the flat black body of the rat lay exposed, its two long yellow tusks showing distinctly. Bigger took a shoe and pounded the rat's head, crushing it, cursing hysterically. You son of a bee. The woman on the bed sank to her knees and buried her face in the quilts and sobbed. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Bigger's encounter with the rat also symbolizes his shootout with the cops. A huge black rat squealed and leaped at Bigger's trouser leg and snagged it in his teeth, hanging on. This symbolizes how Bigger attempted to fight back before he was arrested. I think Wright intended for this scene to have great significance in the book. I believe that this rat killing scene has multiple meanings. Bigger killing the rat shows his thirst for power and symbolizes when he killed Bessie after raping her. Out of all of the things that Bigger's encounter with the rat symbolizes, I think it mostly symbolizes how Bigger is trapped within his community with no means to escape. He can't escape because there's a white man in this case, which is Bigger in the case that we're symbolizing, who is empowered to make sure he ends up right where he belongs. Richard Wright writes Native Son in past tense in the 1930s in Chicago. Bigger's family lives in a one-bedroom apartment in a low-income community on Chicago's south side. The place he's known as home is rat-infested. Then Bigger finds his way into the Dalton home, which is on the opposite end of the spectrum. The two different living situations don't just speak for the Thomas family and the Dalton family, but the living situations represent how the majority of Black people live poorly and the majority of white people live lavishly. Now I will talk about themes. The first one I will address is something I've mentioned a lot, power. Bigger is trying to obtain power, but only wealthy white people have access to it. If black and white people had the same amount of power, black people wouldn't be living in those inhumane situations. In Native Son, Richard Wright suggests that crimes are not just the fault of the criminal, but also the society that the criminal resides in. We see this hold true as Mr. Max defends Bigger in court saying, but those things don't touch the fundamental problem involved here. This boy comes from an oppressed people. Even if he's done wrong, we must take that into consideration. Some other themes in this book are shame, fear, race, family, religion, and faith. So now I'm moving on to character. Bigger Thomas, as you already know, is the main character and protagonist of Native Son. Bigger from a young age has lived his life in fear and anger towards white people. After he killed Mary, that fear slowly went away because Bigger realized that he doesn't just hold power over black people he'd rob, but also white people. Bigger turns into the stereotypical black killer that has plagued America's perspective on black people. He's turned into the native son. Lastly, I will be talking about voice. So while writing Native Son, it is apparent that Wright wrote with a convicting and bold tone. This was necessary to do because the novel has such a deeper meaning. The meaning is to show everyone in America, including white people, how many black lives turn out and why. The tone is sad and depressing and so is the native son's life, which in this case is bigger. I have finally got into the review part of my vlog. Overall, I rate Richard Wright's native son a three out of five. It's like I'm listening to a person who just doesn't know how to stop talking but that person also has valuable information. By that, I mean he could have written a little less, but it all added to the imagery of the novel. If Wright attempted to share with America what Black people go through, I think he only covered about 25%. His story of Bigger Thomas will only help white people continue to view Black people, specifically men, as thieves and killers. I think it would have been a lot more beneficial if he shed more light on the Black-owned businesses Bigger would rob. Those owners don't fit the Native Son stereotype, and neither did many other Black people in the 1930s.